Hello, my name is Samson Saboye. I'm the creative director of Saboye Boutique in Shoreditch. I was born in London. I'm from London, from Nigerian parents, Yoruba tribe. And I live in East London. And I've lived pretty much all over the world. Spent a year in Australia, a year in America, a year traveling around Europe, a year in Asia. And I go back and forth to India. I went to Central St. Martins. I did a four-year degree in fashion, communication and promotion, um, which was, uh, we were in fact new guinea pigs of that year. So for that era, we, they tried this new course where designers were trained in fashion, cutting and designing. And then you were t taught how to be a journalist in your specialism year, from year two onwards. Um, so imaging, photographing models, um, writing about fashion, PR in fashion, doing graphic design. And the end of that project, well, you had to produce your own magazine. And um, I produced a magazine called Sparkle. It was all about glamour, um, high-end glamour, beauty. And I did really well on that course and started styling the minute I left. Um, well, I originally started it to um, really fully embrace my creative talent, my ability and my ideas and I design, I style, I um, teach and I make things. So <laughs> I just wanted to kind of encapsulate the whole vision of uh, Saboye really and that's why I, I created it. Um, there's never two days the same in my week um, and which is partly frustrating but partly why I do what I do because I love the you know, spontaneity of not knowing what's happening each day. Um, but my main chores is like re merchandising the store, making everything look good, uh, maintaining that it looks clean, um, updating our Facebook so that people know what's new in the store, um, contacting photographers and hair and makeup people for my other part of my business, with styling, um, promoting the shop uh, through interviews like this and social media, and also talking to designers on a regular basis. I've had three or four meetings today with designers that want to stock their product in my shop and I'm working out what's going to work, how it's going to work um, and when we're going to get it basically. So just fitting that all in, updating our blog. So yeah, it's a full day. <laughs> I think the state of the Nigerian fashion industry is in a really promising position at the moment. There's a lot of growth, there's a lot of interest, there's a huge amount of creativity coming out of Nigeria. Um, it's really on the map now. Um, got Jewel by Lisa that's doing a really high-end brand. Got Itwen Basi, who we have here, who's doing um, a really creative brand, but using Ankara in a really special way, um, handcrafted way. Um, there was an embargo, I don't know if you know about, where they're stopping import of um, fabrics into Nigeria. So the designers were only using what was locally available. And she's found a way to use what was available, but really give a new um, edge, a new aesthetic to it. So I'm really um, behind what she's doing. And there seems to be some really good stuff coming out of there. I'm really keen. I want to go and visit and see what's happening over there and see if I can find and discover some new talent to kind of launch pad in Saboye. The perception of Nigerian Fashion Week has um, been helped greatly by the things like the African Fashion Week that's been happening um, in Nigeria there's the African Star Week, um, which is Oma Yemi's project, which has really put um, Nigeria on the map. And we have Arise magazine that's um, funded obviously by this day, and they've really um, put, um, given it some calibre and given it some kudos. So we're really finding international big names searching out what's coming out of Nigeria and actually wanting to be a part of what is going on there. So that's uh, very encouraging. The perception's impact on Saboya in a really positive and encouraging way. It means that um, people that would have been scared of African print or African product are now, now no, long, no longer scared. They can see that it's a quality product, it's a product with integrity, and people are now thinking about you know, spending money on products they've never even considered before. I mean, these shirts that I make are selling for £200 a time and that is a, a really um, paradigm shift as far as I'm concerned. A time where you wouldn't have thought about buying a shirt for £200, people are now considering that. Um, Anita Kwanza jewellery is selling from £300 to £600 and the people that are buying it are considering it now as within their 
uh, clothing budget. So I think it's a really positive um, growth market. And it means that designers now can create with an end product and then use that and then uh, customer in mind without thinking that they're just designing for the sake of designing. There's now a bigger market for product that we sell here and that's um, very encouraging. Um, the challenges I've faced since I've been in the industry are twofold. First and foremost, there's been a recession for I mean, the longest I can ever remember, um, but that's in the UK and Europe and some of America. But what we're finding now is Africa is cash rich and so they've got, they're the spring bed of creativity now, which is why the rest of the world is kind of hooked onto it and latched onto it. So there's money there, it's a cash rich society. Um, obviously there's still poverty, but the higher ends of the society are actually pushing forward new things, new ideas. Afrobeat is a, now a world music that everybody listens to. It's become very popular. People are wearing, um, you know, Besto Alain and um, Jewel by Lisa. People are he hearing about it. Um, people are actually now going there to scout models from Nigeria. I've noticed a few people um, taking centre stage. And it's just having a positive impact. People are not scared of Nigeria. It's not just the 419 capital of the world, people are actually thinking of it in a much more positive light. I know shopping malls that are happening, opening there, um, new businesses that are going in there. I mean, a friend or my cousin has mobile phones, iPhone 5 and 6, before I've even seen them here. Um, cars are being launched there before they're even launched here. So yeah, it's a really um, powerful economic market and it means that there's only can be, it can only be growth, can only be beneficial when people start embracing the ideas that can come out of Nigeria and Africa as a whole.